For 20 years, Basbebe was an outcast within her home in Badakhshan, northeast Afghanistan. Complications while giving birth had left a hole in her bladder, a condition known as obstetric fistula. She constantly smelled of urine. No one could stand to be near her. I could not go anywhere. I could not pray. I could not sit with people. It was very difficult for me. The only option I had was to keep myself busy working around the house. Now her humiliating isolation has ended thanks to a new surgery program, a determined doctor, and a stroke of luck. In a few months, Basbebe went from pariah to community leader. Her neighbors chose her to head the local women's council. I'm doing very well. I can walk around, visit other families, and go to other villages. I may even travel to Kunduz. My wish now is to make a pilgrimage. An unknown number of Afghanis develop fistula while in labor. They are the survivors. Basbebe's daughter died of an infection after giving birth at 18. She never got to a hospital. Motherhood here is more dangerous than almost anywhere else in the world. One out of eight women's deaths occur during or soon after pregnancy and childbirth. I gave birth eight times and always at home. At that time, 20 years ago, there were no doctors, no roads, and no health services. There are many reasons for Afghanistan's high maternal mortality. Early and frequent childbearing and a lack of midwives, accessible health facilities, decent roads, and affordable transport. Poverty, conflict, and conservative attitudes also contribute. The same factors also lead to fistula. Most women give birth at home without skilled help. When the delivery is blocked, they typically can't get to a doctor in time to save the baby or avoid injury. I was in labor for three days. The pain was unbearable. When it was finally over, the baby was dead. Ten days later, I realized I was leaking urine. Despite Afghanistan's many problems, maternal health is improving, if slowly. More mothers are receiving critical care. At Provincial Hospital in Faizabad, Dr. Wakila Karim has saved hundreds of women's lives. Earlier this year, she saved Basbebe's niece. That's when Basbebe's life changed. Dr. Karim noticed her in the waiting room and realized she had a problem. At first, she denied anything was wrong. I took her aside and said, think of me as a daughter and let me check you. It took some time to persuade her to accept treatment. Dr. Karim had been trained in fistula surgery in Bangladesh with support from UNFPA, the United Nations Population Fund. She has repaired nine women in the past year. Another woman cured by Dr. Karim lives in an area that is far from any health centers and often unreachable by vehicle. At age 30, Hurban Bibi is putting her life back together after a debilitating ordeal. What could I do with a life like that? I was no use to anyone. I could not stand. I could not sit. I lay in bed all day. I used to say to myself, I wish I had died. Kurban Bibi's village is remote, but her injury was also due to her low status in the family. Her previous delivery was by cesarean section. Doctors told her to come back when she went into labor again. It was a matter of life and death. I pleaded with the men, I've got to go to the hospital, but they said, don't worry, God is kind, everything will be okay. To avoid hiring a car to Faizabad, her relatives took her to a quack in the local bazaar. The woman gave an injection, and Korban Bibi started to bleed heavily. Eventually, a midwife was summoned. The midwife said, you killed her baby. If she doesn't get to a hospital quickly, she will die too. By the time she got proper care, the stillborn infant had opened a large hole between Korban Bibi's bladder and birth canal. 
After two operations, Kurban Bibi has recovered physically, but carries deep psychological scars. Until last year, Afghan women with fistula had no prospect of treatment. Now, there is a surgery facility at Kabul's Malalai Maternity Hospital, supported by UNFPA. The news is starting to get around. Fatima, age 25, came from Ghazni province. She was married at 13. In her fifth pregnancy, after two miscarriages, she could not afford medical care. I had labor pains for two days. Then the baby's head came out, but the shoulder got stuck. Four people picked up my bed and carried me to the hospital. It took three hours. Her life was saved, but Fatima was left with fistula and the terrible smell. My life was awful. I had to stay in another room apart from my family. It made me so sad. Then we learned I could get treatment in Kabul. Many husbands abandon their wives after they develop fistula. But Muhammad Ali, a teacher, stayed with Fatima. And even though they had no money, he brought her to Malalai Hospital. We sold our land to pay for the journey. Then bandits robbed us on the way. We had to return home and borrow money. I'm so worried about this operation. What if my wife dies? Who will take care of our children? Hospital director Dr. Nazrin Oryakiu led the team that operated on Fatima. The procedure was relatively simple, lasting less than an hour, and the surgeon was relieved. This operation was very successful. Diet test is negative. This is a good achievement when we are operate patient. Dye is not coming from the hole. Diet test is negative, and we are very happy now, and we have hope. Muhammad Ali was also relieved. I am so grateful that my wife is okay. Staff at Malalai have performed more than 72 fistula operations this year, giving women like Fatima a new chance to lead productive lives. There is no charge for the surgery or hospital stay. Surgeons from other provinces are being trained here. And a series of TV and radio ads is making more women with fistula aware of the services. UNFPA is also helping the Afghan government mount a campaign to make motherhood safer and prevent fistula. It aims to end early marriage and encourage wider use of health services by promoting the value of women's lives and well-being. I'll be so happy to go home.